Well, happy Friday. We're in 2 Timothy. So great job, great job in sticking with reading from Romans to Revelation, proving yourself to be Christ's disciple and uh, growing in the grace and knowledge of our Lord, um, which is the um, mission of each of us, I think, uh, is to be growing in the Lord. 2 Timothy, just to give you an overview, is a combat manual, how to go to work for the Lord, how to go to war with him in a world that's against us. Uh, first two chapters of this four-chapter book are about the foundations of Christian service. The last two chapters about the difficulties or challenges of Christian service. In this first chapter, uh, Paul opens in verses 1 through 7 with a discussion of Timothy's heritage. Very interesting here. First, we see Paul's affection for Timothy. This is a, clearly a co-worker that Paul dearly loves. And then we see uh, Timothy's intensity in ministry. There was a time where he shed tears, as maybe uh, I know I have, and maybe sometimes you have shed tears over ministry, over the condition of the church, over the condition of the community that you live in. So we see Timothy's intensity shown by the tears that he shed. We learn about Timothy's heritage of faith from his grandmother and his mother. Uh, if you go back and look at Timothy's background in the book of Acts, you'll find that his father was Greek and his mother's side of the family was Jewish. So he was raised in the scriptures. We see God's spirit working in him. But at the same time, Paul tells Timothy that he must fan into flame the spiritual gift that was given to him. That is, Timothy needs to put this gift to work. I mentioned this before. We've seen it in 1 Timothy. We see it again here that uh, our gifts are given to us, uh, but we need to put them to work. We need to uh, fan them into flame. Verses 8 through 14 is a series of exhortations to Timothy. Let me point out that um, in the history of the New Testament, it seems like this is the last letter, not Titus, but this is the last letter that Paul wrote. About 68 AD, uh, not long after this, Paul was beheaded for his faith. So there's an urgency here as well as a, a pathos, kind of a sadness as Paul gives Timothy, his young uh, pastoral associate, uh, final instructions to carry him through. By the way, church history also tells us that Timothy was, in fact, faithful. But to go on here in the exhortation, he warns him not to be ashamed of the testimony about Jesus or the testimony about Paul. So what, what do these have in common? What is this common testimony he's not to be ashamed of? Well, I think one strong possibility here is the fact that both Jesus and Paul suffered grievously for their faith. As we discussed in uh, Colossians chapter 2, the church is built by the suffering of the saints. It's built by the shed blood of the saints. I think Paul is calling Timothy to remember that and not be ashamed of it. That Christ shed his blood. Paul has shed blood. He suffered physically. This is what Timothy is called to do. So get in the game. Shame, share in the suffering is what he's telling him here, I think. Um, and then finally, um, he's exhorting him finally to teach the apostolic doctrine. Teach the doctrine that was handed down from Paul to Timothy. It's important that we not add to or take away from. Uh, if, you're, if you're a Bible teacher and you think you have discovered something that no one else has ever seen before in the history of the church, uh, it's unlikely. <laughs> in fact, I would go so far as to say it's, I would say, nearly impossible, I guess. Uh, but uh, we're supposed to be teaching the doctrine of the apostles. Where do we have that doctrine? We have that doctrine in the Bible. That's where it's at. So finally, he closes with some examples. You know, 
a good example or a bad example is uh, worth a lot more than a whole series of exhortations. So he talks about the bad, bad examples of Hermogenes and Phygelus, uh, men who had abandoned him. And uh, contrast that with Anisiphorus, who was a faithful man, sought Paul out in his imprisonment, joined with him in his suffering, helped him in his need. So what, the question, of course, is what kind of man are you going to be, Timothy? Uh, are, which column are you going to be? Are you going to be the uh, bad servant or the good one? So let me ask you uh, to apply this in a few different ways. Uh, one is to reflect on and thank God for those who have invested in you. Uh, all of us uh, represent the uh, ministry of others. Uh, we've been built into by pastors, by teachers, by godly men and women that we've known either directly or say vicariously or virtuously, uh, uh, virtually through the internet uh, that we've heard of and learned about. Uh, all of us are the result of the work of others. Uh, so let's be recognizing that. Let's thank God for them. Let's uh, remember those who have taken care of us uh, spiritually and caused us to grow. I, um, it's important to do that, and uh, we all need to do that. Let me also ask you, are you like Timothy in the sense that you're afraid to get into the fight? Uh, are you afraid of the suffering that discipleship is going to entail? Um, here in the United States, um, oftentimes uh, it's a fear of being inconvenienced. Uh, it's not a fear of suffering as much as just being inconvenienced. And uh, that should sting a little bit. <laughs> In the history of the church, we have uh, example after example of brothers and sisters who have shed their own blood uh, for the sake of the gospel. We're rarely called to do that. And um, what we are called to do, though, is be diligent and speak up when we need to or have the opportunity and serve where we can. And the problem is often, again, not so much that we're afraid to shed our blood. We just don't want to be inconvenienced. And finally, uh, as you reflect on this first chapter of 2 Timothy, um, think about which example column you should be in. Uh, look at your life uh, from, this purpose of, uh, from the perspective of Scripture, not comparing yourself with yourself or comparing yourself with someone else, but comparing yourself to what's written in the Bible. Where do you line up? Uh, which example are you going to be? Are you going to be like Onesimus, who was faithful, diligent, helpful? Or are you going to be like Phygelus and Hermogenes, who abandoned, who turned, who ran? It's your choice, uh, and it's a choice that you have to make. And for all of us, I think it's a choice that we make um, daily and moment by moment. So I encourage you uh, to reflect on that this weekend. Uh, think about these things as uh, we work our way through the pastoral epistles. So God bless you, brothers and sisters. May you have a really blessed weekend in the Lord. Um, take some time to reflect on the things you're reading and applying. God bless you.